Welcome to Swagger's Lifestyle. Hello, how you doing? Hope you're good. This is Swagger's Lifestyle and I am your host, Bobo Swagger. It's always wonderful coming to have conversations with you. Today is not an exception. I've been meaning to have this conversation. Hmm. Rachel Wachin said, if we were meant to stay in one place, we had have roots instead of feet. Welcome to our series, A Nigeria Living In. Today, we'll be focusing on the Philippines. I'll be speaking to an amazing doctor in the making. Her story will inspire you. She has a YouTube channel called Adi Mimi. I would actually drop the link in the description box. Go to her channel, show her some love, subscribe to her channel. She has amazing content. Today, we're gonna have fun. So I will just allow her to please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Adi and I am Nigerian, precisely from Anambra State. I am Igbo, by the way. I currently live and study in a country called Philippines. Philippines is a country located in the southeastern part of Asia and that is where I currently live and study. I am a medical student and I'm currently in my final year of medical school. So <laughs> I think that's just the intro. Thank you so much for coming to our channel today and thank you for honoring our invites. I know we're going to have fun. And also, you did add that you love eating rice anyway. Let's leave that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that in the conversation. So, that you've been so, following my channel, like you've been you. keeping up, like you follow my channel. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I can't stop. Your channel is very engaging, Thank you so much. inspiring, Thank you. and actually informative. So I'm not patronizing, it's just the truth. Aww. So how was relocating for you? Uh, for me, relocating, because I actually really wanted to go back to school. So relocating was, to be honest with you, I would say that number one, it's God. I didn't see this coming. Like, I've never heard of Philippines, by the way. I just heard about it through someone. and. From the time I started processing my application to the start time I came to Philippines, it was just within the space of three months. So I'd say, number one, it was actually God. And settling here was not so easy for me because this is Asia, there's language barrier. I was not used to the environment and all of that. But um, pretty much, I'm settling in. Oh, okay, it's okay. Actually. I'm sure you would have actually settled in a lot because it's been how many years now? <laughs> <laughs> this is my third year. So I know, right? Yeah, you just have to. <laughs> I should say you're a mini citizen. <laughs> I know, so, right? Tell me about how you're able to settle in the Philippines when you got there. Wow. So I came in here in 2019. Actually, I didn't really know anyone. But the thing is that before you can process admission here in the Philippines, you need to have someone that can help you, like kind of like okay. an agent. It's not like countries like UK or US where you just process your application online. You really need an agent here. So I actually met a lady, not a lady actually, a woman in my state in Anambra. And that, at that time, I was actually thinking of, you know, going back to school to study nursing, but it didn't work out. And she told me that, oh, her son's schools here in a country called Philippines. Would you want to come here? I was like, okay. I took the guy's number and you know we started communicating so he was the one that processed my admission for me and i came in here so he was like the only one i knew coming into philippines i didn't know anyone i don't know any family members here i didn't have friends it was wow. just me alone i remember the day I, I was like in the airport in lagos i was like how am i going to do this i just knew that I'm traveling, this is like a travel, like a step of faith. I was literally going to a country mm -hmm. and guess what? It's about two days flight away from Nigeria. So imagine that I was just very far, literally very far. So I was going to a country where I didn't know anyone aside from the person I was connected to, which I didn't even know the person one-on-one -on -one you get. It, it was just a communication through phone. Yes. And he came to the, uh, I, I, when I landed in the, uh, in the airport, I booked a hotel and all of that so that was literally it i didn't know anyone coming here actually so certainly mean it was really wow. difficult for me you know it's not like places like maybe uk you can say at least you know yeah. someone or maybe at least a friend someone friend's that friend someone that you get. Some, yes. like this is fresh for or me even yeah. a community. <laughs> i didn't know anyone so it was really 
not easy settling in in the first place so but how were you able to navigate were you able to is there like a nigerian community there did you go through probably your school to be able to navigate getting an accommodation settling down knowing places or you just stopped to using google <laughs> went online to check all of those um, How are you the good to do thing is education? that there are actually Nigerians here. So when I came okay. in, I met um, two Nigerians. One was studying nurse, um, medicine and the other one was studying dentistry. So they were the, the ones that helped me, you know, showed me around initially, like the markets, the malls, you know, they helped me to settle in. Like when I was looking for apartment, they were the ones that helped me out. So i think my school we actually do have lots of nigerians so i was able to connect with a few nigerians there and they were really very helpful oh that is so nice everywhere we go we are helpful people kind and of funny enough you know i currently live with those people right now we rented an oh, apartment wow, and together we... that's amazing that's amazing shout out to all of them thank you so much for having a very good and kind heart <laughs> Okay, so what is they will definitely living? hear that they're actually not home right now, but I will do send your greetings. Oh, please, please do, please do tell them to keep being amazing. <laughs> what is living in the Philippines like? Ah, <sighs> see, living in the Philippines, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, right? let's get but to it. <laughs> it depends on your perspective. For me, I know that I'm coming, I came here for my studies. Philippines is not really a country where it's not like the UK or Australia or some of these countries where you can easily study and stay back. You get, mm -hmm. you don't get your papers. You, you just have student visa all through your duration of study. So it's not really a country where you're looking forward to settling in. That's for me though. So okay. coming here, I just know I'm here like literally for my education. You get, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I think you're trying to be <laughs> modest because okay so we all know that when we move from a certain place to another new place there are actually yeah. things that we're not used to so what was the cultural shock for you what is the people like what is their food like all of that so what is living in the philippines like wow for me the cultural shock firstly is filipinos they are very how do i put this they are very simple people they are very mm. content like they are very easygoing people like you can see a filipino the person may have the money but they will choose to they just like a simple life for example let me just give you an instance okay you know how in church in nigeria yes. let's be honest when it comes to fashion we nigerians we are very very dramatic when it, most like most <laughs> of, of nigerians yes, are very dramatic are. when it <laughs> comes to like your dressing, you tie gele, you wear this one, wear heels. But I just observed in the churches here, it's it's not like that. Even in their home stage, they can just rent a house, live. And also another thing I noticed is that they, they don't really cook. Most of the time they buy their food. So as a Nigerian, <laughs> they don't cook. When I was so looking for a house, yeah, say, I got married a woman that does not cook. It does not apply. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh wow. my god. Wow. You know. When I came in newly, most of the houses, most of the apartments or the, the rooms you will see, they will tell you either the, you have to buy your food or no cooking. I'm like, I'm Nigerian. No cooking. I'm not here used to your food. How do you expect me to keep buying food or to keep eating out? The most shocking thing for me here is that rice is, you can literally eat rice Monday to Sunday in the Philippines. Rice is like their basic food. like. How do you, you know, they can eat rice with chicken. They can have rice with hot dog. They can wow. eat, have rice with banana. Have, rice and oh banana. My God. Wow. <laughs> if you come here, you're going to have a lot of rice. I think it's peculiar to Asians generally. Oh, is there a It's not just yeah. a Philippines thing. Yeah, they eat a lot of rice. So initially when I came out, I couldn't relate to it. You know, you know how we have food like swallow, yeah, we beans, have rice. yam in Nigeria, but it's not like that here. Here it's busy. you're gonna be eating rice. And I think I'm even used to it right now. And I eat a lot of rice right now. <laughs> I remember calling you Dr. Adi the rice eater. <laughs> because I saw so many combinations of rice on your channel and I'm wondering at what's happening here. Okay, so what is like the transportation system like? Is it like what we have in Nigeria? When it comes to the transportation system here, they have things called, there is jeepney. You have to enter from the back. 
and it's not like the regular buses we have in nigeria where you just sit you know like across it's it's just like the two long chairs so for me i i, I haven't seen jeepney and then there's something else they have here it's it's a bike right it's just like a bike but then they have this um like a cart or a carriage where people enter and the first time i came in here like the first day i came in at the hey there are dogs barking the dogs are barking, the dogs are barking. <laughs> let's wait for them to I pass see. they like dogs too <laughs> <laughs> they love dogs yeah they love dogs so when i landed at the airport so i was trying to go have dinner with you remember the guy i told you that helped yes. me processing my yes. admission so i left the hotel and he was like the place is close by but it's a bit far so he stopped um a transport system i can't remember what it's called but i'm also going to send you the picture okay. so it's like a bike and then there's somewhere you have to enter i'm like what is this i haven't seen this before it was just so funny to me but yeah that's the kind of transport system they have here the mostly the jeepneys and then they also have the regular buses that the government provided especially um during the pandemic they made it very common so i think it's still available even though the jeepneys are also still available and when it comes to the public transport system it's reasonably affordable with about uh let's say 12 peso to 20 peso for the buses you can actually 12 peso to, to 20 peso is maybe between 130 to roughly 160 okay. you can actually get to at least a fair location wow, that's, here that's in the philippines cheap. so their public transport system is actually yes, affordable it's, it's... and they also have um what's it called they also have um taxis same way we have uber in nigeria the one the one here is called grab okay um you can also book grab grab is also fairly affordable and you get to see decent drivers and they also have this bike system it's called anchors where you also book your ride like you book your okada mm -hmm. literally you know okada yeah, now they have an app to book <laughs> you book oh, your okada wow, that's, good. I that's good you have a right to book okada yeah <laughs> an app to book okada yeah you book your okada wow. kind that's of nice. yeah and it's also fairly affordable i i even prefer the the anchor starts the okada service to you know taking public um, transports yeah i think Asians this is more really like, like this is, this is, this place has this nigerian vibe to it somehow <laughs> <laughs> so they give you helmets or you have your own helmets or you just ride just like that no 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 they provide oh. helmets wow that that's amazing so what were the other cultural shocks that you know that um, you experienced Hmm. Saga, you see Filipinos when it comes to their break time, they don't joke with break time like lunch time, yes. right? They don't joke with it. Imagine you can go to the market and you want to buy something between 12 and 1 is the lunch time here. So if you go to the market once it's 12 o'clock, Saga, they will tell you, "Ma'am, I can sell i want lunch break In imagine that just i don't know if you can it's just it's just like going to the market you now. want to buy something and and they 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 are on, which, not, imagine they said they're not selling because it's lunch time it's just very <laughs> funny to me i found it even in offices it's literally 12 to 1 o'clock if you have anything to do here in the philippines once it's 12 to 1 just stay wherever you are wow and then after one o'clock you can just proceed with whatever you want to do but 12 to 1 they observe it like everybody even in the markets people in the malls oh my god it's a huge thing here so it was something shocking to me and also there's this food called um balut balut, balut is like a chicken that is not yet properly hatched they make it they cook they boil it they boil the egg so imagine like a baby oh chicken god yeah 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 and sometimes it will it, some some already have started forming like the eggs have started forming so you'll even see the feathers oh my god oh my really? god oh my god they call it balut anyway <laughs> yeah balut b a yeah you need to and they eat it it's something i haven't tried and i will never try i'm sorry if you're filipino watching this i'm sorry but balut nah you know they cook with animal blood you blood. know blood blood literally they make blood. Yeah, yeah blood red blood they sell it in the markets and cook they said they make sauce with it i've forgotten what it's called in their local language but 
I find that also very shocking. I have never heard that you with can make sauce with animal, animal blood. blood. <laughs> like the real blood. Blood, Honestly, blood. I haven't tried that too. <laughs> blood, like blood. Oh, it's wow. sold in the market. Okay. Wow. So the people, how are they like? Are they hospitable? Are they kind-hearted people? When people yes. ask me this question, I don't try to, you know, okay. generalize it. I judge people based on an individual okay. level. Just the same way in Nigeria, you have good yeah. people, you have nice people, people that, that are kind and all of that. Same for me, the experiences I've had here, I've had very, I've experienced very, very amazing, kind and wonderful Filipinos. For example, the owner of this house, my landlady, she's such a sweet Aww. woman, like, if we have any complaints sometimes she even messages me she asks me oh adi how are you doing how it's school you know how are you coping she's just a wonderful and a sweet and an amazing woman and then there are also some that not that they are not so receptive but they will prefer to speak to their own fellow local person like a filipino instead of speaking to you and I think language and exposure also plays a huge part when it comes to those kind of people. Okay. They love their language. Filipinos, they have their own local language, by the way. It's called um, Tagalog. Tagalog. And then they all, they, in the city where I live, I live in a city called Cebu City. Okay. They also have their own local language called Cebuano, right? So most of them prefer to speak in their local language. Even in my, I'm currently in my fourth year and I'm in my clinical, so I go to the hospital and this is based on my own experience. They would prefer to speak some, not all, like mm -hmm. I said, some would prefer to speak to their local person in the language. local language. And mm -hmm. if you don't really understand the language, you will feel left out and that way you're not going to feel so good, right? So I feel like it depends on the person actually and also the level of exposure. From my um, observation, Based on my own experience and what I've noticed, most of them that are well exposed or well traveled are quite different. Mm. I don't know how to explain. They are quite different when it comes to relating with foreigners or foreign students. They are quite different. But those that haven't really exposure, expo yeah, yeah, exposure, exposure matters. matters. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say to the yeah, way that you're going to no, come. Traveling up. opens your mind. Yeah, yeah. Traveling opens your mind. Yeah. So I understand. So, yeah. Yeah, it also depends yes. on an individual, actually. So I'm not going to generalize it and say, oh, Filipinos are bad people. No, I have experienced amazing. In my second year, my group mates, oh my God, my, my group mates were just amazing people. They try to carry you along. They understand that you're not from the uh, from Philippines and you may be having struggles. So they try to carry me along. They are nice people. And then you can also meet those that are not so nice. So it's, it just depends on an individual yeah. level. So that's what I can I, say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because I, I tell people, I said, I say um, people will always be different. And you don't just, you know, stereotype. So yeah. because you could have the good, the bad, and, and the ugly. And I don't understand. Yeah. That's why I don't try to judge people. So that's why I get upset when people say nigerians yeah, this, are this yeah, this, nigerians yeah, are this you know online i don't get out of the millions of nigerians this is just one experience you have and so because of one experience you can't just use an experience of one person to judge, to judge a, whole a whole country do you get <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true so do you know how to speak or did you learn how to speak your language <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. Aww. I wish I could, but I can't. Well, the thing is, I know a few words. I know um, uh, what's it called. I know like a couple of words. Salamat for means thank mm -hmm. you. Um, uh, what's it called? Guapo means like I know like sent a phrases, but I don't. So, really but the know, phrases, like, the phrases sorry, that you know, can they form sentences? Know how to speak it. Not really. That's what I'm saying honestly that's one of the huge challenge for me and for a lot of foreigners living here especially foreign students yes right when you come in here it's not like a place like back then like before the whole situation going on now mm -hmm. in ukraine in countries like ukraine russia when you come in for medical education mm -hmm. there you take a one-year yes. language course right before you can yes. proceed to medical school but it's not like that mm -hmm. here 
they say they say it's english it's it's english speaking so the universities here actually they teach us in english so you don't need to do a one-year program to learn the course so that's the situation right so i didn't really learn and then in my i think towards the end of my first year that was when the whole pandemic mm -hmm. situation happened and we've been having online classes for almost two years so i didn't really have that experience of mixing up i don't know how you i, get I don't know if you get what i mean mixing up with was the house. that's number We're one but that aside it's actually for me it's actually not easy to learn a new, mm. new language that's to be honest with you yeah, not, every not everybody has the gift you know some have, have an ear for language yeah some yeah just don't. Yeah. So, so it's so sad i really don't know how to speak the local language and it's a huge challenge for me now that i am in my Aww, final year <laughs> don't worry, you'll, be, you'll be fine for over yeah. three years you've been able to put pull our weather through you'll be fine <laughs> i know right but it's it's, it's crazy right now it's crazy but we're yeah. coping <laughs> so what are the success stories in philippines that can be replicated in nigeria one i would say is there are challenges here right but one thing one of the good things i would say about here is that at least their educational system is very organized it's very very organized rather in the sense that there is nothing like strike here even in the public uni in, in the, even in the public universities there is nothing like strike if they tell you that your course is four years and that in four years time you're graduating best believe that four years you're graduating that's if you're paying your school fees and you're not owing anything and if you're passing your courses so the system of education here is well organized in your first year for example you know in nigeria how difficult it is to get yes. into medical school it's not really like that here in the sense that they give you the opportunity to at least come into school in your first year then it's left for you to prove yourself at least in first year they admitted in my school in first year where, where they admitted a lot of students giving people opportunity to prove themselves then if you're not serious then possibly you may fail out or something but at least they give you that opportunity to, to come in and irrespective of the number of students in a batch or in a in a, in a what's it called in a section right they still subdivide us into smaller groups and that's way they can get to manage the numbers in smaller smaller numbers so I, I feel like if there's a way they can also emulate what they do here by subdividing into smaller groups that way you're able to a teacher can actually manage the number of students because i don't understand how you can be over 400 500 in a lecture room what are you learning i mean what are you learning and also this issue of strike i don't know how they organize it here but there is nothing like strike here they pay the the, the lecturers they pay the teachers on time so that way nobody is striking four years here is four years swagger i came here in 2019 and i'm set to graduate in 2023 and we are still on schedule right that's one of the things i would say their educational system it's very organized yeah when the COVID started we we had to switch to online learning so most part of our second year i know in fact all of our second year was online and also some part of our third year was online was done online so even with the covid it didn't affect our academic sections here in philippines we have light 24 7. i always say that <laughs> on my channel yeah 24 7. It, it's still a developing country but i mean they still have electricity and we all know how it is at home in nigeria like el electricity is quote and unquote if you live only in very high brow areas that's when you can have like constant electricity for 24 7. but here even the the common people the poor people everyone has access to 24 7 electricity you know and i just feel it's if we can have that in nigeria it's going to be it's going to be a huge thing for us you know there are lots of companies closing down lots of factories closing down just because there is no constant supply of electricity i feel it's going to make a huge difference yeah and also the medical their hospitals here they actually do have equipment it's well organized you know it's clean the facilities they have clean and decent facilities here even in the public hospitals what is called public hospitals here for example in my third year we went for this clinical rotation 
in some courses in a public like it's one of the biggest public hospitals here so in my mind i'm like ah this one we are going to this public hospital how is it gonna be but i was very surprised when we got there it was clean the facilities were top not like top notch top notch but it was decent clean the wards were clean everything was in place like the departments everything they have uh, machines and it just left me wondering how <laughs> when are we going to get here in public hospitals even in nigeria they owe salaries you know the hospital sometimes they will tell you that there is no electricity in hospital because my elder sister is was a doctor in nigeria and she used to tell me some of these things and i'm like wondering why why should it be so what is the government doing about situations like this there was a time she told me that in the hospital there was no electricity so imagine for babies like uh, premature babies that are still in the NICO in the neonatal uh, intensive care unit so imagine that how do such babies survive but it's not like that here like I told you there's 24 7 electricity there's equipment in the hospital there's a working system the nurses the doctors everyone is being paid so they show up at work when are we going to get there in Nigeria you know it, it's it's so sad <laughs> it's so sad but it's something I really wish we can, you know, have back home. Um, uh, it's expensive here, yeah, even though we say it's a developing country, it's still expensive. Now, um, when you're, if you're getting money from Naira, right? As at today, one Naira, one peso is about roughly 14.5, uh, 15 Naira. So imagine they send you, let's say someone sent you money from Naira right let's say 200,000 so divide 200,000 by 14.5 that's how much you're left with in pesos so it's still expensive to live here right i just feel it's still except for example my apartment it's a rented house we pay about 13,500 peso so i don't know if you do the mathematics it's a lot of yeah yeah so it's it's pretty much expensive when you compare it to nigeria right because most of the students here are being sponsored by their families like i i forgot to mention your student visa does not really allow you to work here right so most of the students still get support from their families back in nigeria so by the time you're converting the naira to the peso equivalent it's still expensive but then when you compare it to studying in more developed countries of course philippines is way cheaper when you compare it to maybe places like uk or australia it's way way cheaper so i think that's why most africans come here for their studies actually um one of the things i like most about here because it's the reason why i came here in the first place is their system of education imagine i'm doing medicine in nigeria uh, and it's eight, eight months eight months it's almost one academic year so imagine that if i was doing medicine in nigeria i must have lost at least one year you get but here i'm still i'm sure that by god's grace anyway i'm sure that by july august 2023 i'm done with my medical degree so that's one of the things i love 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 about here i'm i'm not gonna lie i'm very grateful for the opportunity to come here for my studies that's one of the things i love their educational system which is what brought me here in the first place <laughs> they have lots of um what's it called is it beach lakes um actually even foreigner like Caucasians actually come here for vacation even though I've not really had the opportunity to travel around the country but they do have tourist attraction sites especially water bodies is a huge thing here and they have lots of tourists 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 coming here for for their vacation so I have not really had the opportunity to you know travel around because I'm always busy with school the last holiday I, I think i mentioned it to you i wanted to travel last holiday before this whole natural disaster happened but yeah they have lots and lots of beautiful um resort centers and lakes and islands yeah for foreigners right for foreigners especially nigerians it's not really so easy to get a job here right it's not so easy so if you're coming here also i want you to know that there's a a thing as language barrier if you're someone that you're not open to learning a new language i won't also advise you to come here that's the truth because language barrier it's a huge 
challenge and if you don't know how to speak the language it's going to limit you in so many ways so if you want to come here please it should be specifically for your studies they have a lot of courses they take here medicine nursing engineering and all of that i would advise only for academic purposes because when it comes to academics it's reasonably reasonably way better than what you have in nigeria so if you want to come for academics sure you can but if it's for relocation purposes i'm not sure personally in my own opinion i'm not sure i would advise you to come thank you so much thank you so much for that thank you very very much hope you had fun with our conversation today i actually did have fun and i learned a lot the truth is this series is one that has come to stay and for you out there if you're a nigerian living in any part of the world and you want to share your experience, you could actually reach us at swaggerslifestyle at gmail.com and we would definitely want to have the conversation with you. Till I come your way next time, this is Bobo Swagger and this is Swagger's Lifestyle. Do not forget that if you need to relocate, ensure you have a plan. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I would love to read from you, drop a comment and also subscribe to Dr. Adi Mimi's channel. Adi Mimi would actually drop it in the in the link and also if you have you know your own experience if you're a nigerian living in the philippines and you have your own experience you can drop it in the comment section and if you want us to have this conversation do not forget to send us an email take care and bye